Just said give him a minute. Mr. Paul said just give him a minute. Everybody ready? The meeting is now called to order. Roll call, Madam Secretary. <laughs> All board members are present and accounted for. Thank you. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. We do not have any public comment this afternoon. So our next item is the action item for the resolution finding a bidder not responsible, Mr. McMichael. Thank you. Uh, the administration is recommending that the board ad adopt this resolution. Uh, it, the resolution is determining a low bidder is, is not a responsible bidder. So we're asking for action on that and the detail of that, that entire resolution you have in front of you. Thank you. May I have a motion to approve the resolution finding a bidder not responsible? So moved. Thank you, Katie. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Jennifer. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll take a vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. <clears throat> Our next action item is the bid award for the Carmel High School Football Stadium Additions and Renovations Category four, structural steel, Mr. McMichael. Thank you. Um, there it is. I am. So the recommendation on this uh, bid category four, structural steel, is to award this bid to Geiger and Peters um, in the amount of two million one hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars. This is for the Carmel High School Stadium. Thank you. May I have a motion to approve the bid award for the Carmel High School Football Stadium Additions and Renovations Category 4 Structural Steel? So moved. I'll second. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer, and second from Greg. Any discussion? Seeing none, we will now take a vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. The next part of our agenda is our workshop topic, Carmel Clay School's Strategic Plan. Dr. Beresford. Thank you very much. Um, I need to grab the clicker. Oh, Colleen's coming my way. Um, uh, my part of the program this, uh, this afternoon, this evening, is going to be a little, little quick and short because uh, I'm going to talk just a little bit about our we're going to land the plane, our, our current strategic plan. It will be over the, this year, in 2025 here in the spring. And uh, then I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Ostrike to talk about the structure of the upcoming new strategic plan. So I'm going to go kind of quickly. Um, and what I thought, uh, since we're off to a little slower start than we anticipated, um, you've got legal pads and pens. So if you have questions, if you'd let me just go through it, and then just write down your questions as you go. Louise is saying, no way, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but, uh, but if you would, you know, of course, it's, you can do whatever you want, Louise. Um, but uh, if you uh, want, then we could just do the questions at the end uh, just to keep it as efficient as possible. So with that, I'm just going to dive in. So we had uh, four key areas of the strategic plan. Um, and the first one, of course, is student learning. And... Uh, the reason I'm not going to go to a ton of details because you guys have had workshops and uh, and you've had reports from Dr. Dudley, uh, Mr. McMichael, Dr. Ostrike throughout the years. So you, you probably know a lot more about these things than uh, so don't need too much explanation. But I did want to run through some of the pieces of it. So the first one, student learning, and of course we wanted rigorous and differentiated learning opportunities. Uh, you knew that we had to focus on literacy and mathematics and career technical programming because those were 
the three major areas of uh, program evaluation that Dr. Dudley and her team went through. And uh, the big growth in career technical and internships has been well documented throughout the years. Um, integrated authentic assessment measures to ensure greater relevance for students promote achievement. That was early on in uh, making sure that we were communicating if kids were mastering the skills and the information and uh, how do we measure that and how do we communicate that because when you get right down to it, grades are uh, communication and, uh, and that support piece of it. And then strengthening student engagement and closing achievement gaps by ensuring that students have rigorous content and support needed to be successful. And uh, we had a, uh, a report by Dr. Dudley uh, several months ago now that uh, where she re reported on achievement gaps, and we had uh, the biggest closure of achievement gaps in my career, and uh, so that was pretty, pretty impressive. So our key measurements were formative, sum summative assessment data. That means the day-to-day, -day, and then, of course, the big tests or the big projects, the big, big tests or things that we did to measure uh, how kids are doing. Uh, of course, the program evaluations we went through, and we, uh, which is one of the hallmarks of Carmel Clay Schools, uh, the curriculum and development that comes after that, and uh, all those pieces. So some of the strategic examples, some of these might look uh, familiar, uh, where we talked about phonological and phonemic awareness uh, at the start, uh, this, uh, this strategic plan. Um, Structures for responsive instruction, uh, the math program evaluation, and uh, I'll always remember those two. Uh, what grade were they in? First or second, maybe? Yeah, first grade, and they both worked out problems on easels here on the on the floor, and uh, they both got the, to the right answer, and they they both did it completely differently, and then they had a discussion between the two of them on why they liked the other one's strategy. And uh, we saw the shift, really, from getting the right answer to how do you problem solve. Um, research and authentic assessment, again, uh, strong data culture using data to inform instruction and planning, uh, use of multiple data points to identify students who may need additional support, and then, of course, professional development. To hear that uh, phrase, we just uh, had an executive session, identity safe learning environments to increase engagement. Second big area was student support, so student support services. And uh, the goal here is to ensure all students experience a safe and supportive environment that's responsive to the needs of each student, which is one of our guiding principles as well. Um, also to make sure students' social and emotional needs are met and supported because uh, kids are whole kids, not just, just a, an academic side. They have a whole, they're a whole kid. And ensure access to mental health support, serve as a resource for families, um, with school concerns or if they're in need of assistance, even outside of school. And you can see the key measures on the right side there. And I think you've heard a lot about this. I'll move on. Here's some of the strategic examples. Uh, so uh, this is the, the seventh year, and we've had seven different uh, school safety plans because uh, uh, mostly Mr. Woodward's work on never being satisfied and always trying to find better ways to keep our kids safe. Um, staff, student, parent training on safety protocols with the parent academy, implementation of fully staffed SRO unit, and uh, I could talk all night about that. Our excess control, uh, we did a lot of work on that up front in the last strategic plan and continued that going on into to, uh, the second strategic plan, and I imagine that we'll continue that into the next strategic plan and the next one after that on how do we keep uh, access controlled. Uh, refinement of technological safety enhancements, equity training and, and initiatives for staff, which you just heard an hour on that. Uh, monitoring and refinement of contracted mental health services, and uh, that's been a big team work there between student services and Mr. McMichael and the Wellness Center, uh, all working to make sure that our families have access if they need it. Uh, pandemic recovery, I feel like we've recovered from the pandemic. Uh, there's still some lingering things that maybe will never go away, but uh, but we've met uh, and really we're thankful for the opportunities that we, are, we had our mental health help and, uh, and really the academic and, and behavioral supports in place um, prior, just prior to when the pandemic hit. So we're pretty fortunate for that. Uh, suicide prevention, training response protocols, um, development of the processes for collaboration with local agencies. Uh, and how do we help kids and families with, in adverse life circumstances? Student support uh, and uh, 
not enough you can say about that is on the, there's the academic side, but kids can't learn if they have a lot going on uh, that they're walking into school with, and, and student services is a place where we try to meet those needs. Third uh, big group is employee growth and satisfaction, and uh, this is heavily into Dr. Ostrike's area, and uh, here we have applicant tracking data. That's a system that we use, and uh, we were probably using, uh, I'd say at the start, we were probably using maybe 5 to 10 percent of that uh, program's capability, and now we're using probably almost 100 percent of it. Um, exit interviews, customer service feedback. Um, trained system data compliance, uh, that's those compliance. Uh, we just switched to a different company this last year. Spiral review of policy processes and procedures, market surveys. Uh, so with, to meet that goal of creatively recruiting, hiring, onboarding, and retaining a diverse and premier staff, um, it's, it's, an on, it's been an ongoing, uh, uh, ongoing layers from different, about really about every corner that you can look at to try to make sure we keep our employees, but also how do we locate, recruit, and, uh, and land the best and the brightest. Um, we have some PD on there, and also, of course, keeping that relationship, strong relationship with the Carmel Teachers Association. Here's some examples, um, and you've heard about these quite a bit, but cultivating teacher pipelines. How do you deal with a, a, a nationwide teacher shortage? And that's you can't do things the way you always did them. you got to go do some things different. And so uh, you can. there's just a list here of, of different opportunities to, to grow that uh, not only grow and have quality applicants for the staff, but also to to have it uh, diverse and try to make it uh, you know reflect our student body. Um, targeted messaging to employ e candidates was uh, how do we uh, engage people that applied or are in our system that we haven't connected with them, and how can we connect with them? Um, really, you, Dr. Ostrack and his team really made it a one-stop shop. And really very, very efficient and very a lot of hand holding to get people through that process and not leave anybody on the you know on a list that doesn't get contacted. Um, uh, enhanced marketing and promotion of CCS first time in my career. there's ever an advertisement on a shopping cart in order to try to get people into into the Carmel Clay School system family. Um, targeted job fair recruitments our, our mid year and summer. Um, recruitment fairs have been outstanding. I don't know anybody that's uh, been able to to be as successful at filling all the holes before school starts uh, with uh, Dr. Ostrack and his team's work. And of course, that onboarding process I mentioned. As far as growth and satisfaction, um, so you have uh, the Carmel Clay Teachers Association, their collaboration, bargaining, uh, working with the teacher handbook review. Uh, just a lot of collaboration uh, between the, the teachers association and it's a it's a relationship that we cherish and uh, that really makes us stronger and it really puts our kids in a much better better situation than uh, you can imagine um, when we work as a team we just you know the first first thing was together we're better and it still holds true uh, specialized professional development is needed um, the compliant pro compliance training processes trying to get that smooth uh, the identity safe workplace, talented development system. Uh, Dr. Ostrike and Dr. Dudley have just done a wonderful job of rolling that out. That is one area that we're probably going to have a little leftover because uh, um, we chose to go slower so we can go farther instead of going faster and go not as far. Uh, that was something when you, we got into it, we learned that uh, you can't just push something in and a whole program and expect you to well. You have to take your time, make sure everybody understands it thoroughly so that it's it's well done and people understand um, the um, importance of it and really the how-to of it. And uh, once that's fully implemented, I'm going to be watching because uh, for the first time in a long time, the idea of evaluation and development of talent over rating people, uh, I think it's going to be uh, the first time we meet with what teachers actually do and need and want to to be successful for our students' sake uh, will finally be matched up with an evaluation system. And I think it'll be, it'll, it's, it's already, we're seeing benefits from it, but I think it's going to be a, a big dynamic uh, piece. But that's one that I don't think we're going to land in 2025, but I think 25, 26 probably pretty darn close. And uh, 
that'll be ongoing, but what a great thing. Um, Wellness Center, benefits and promotion. Uh, you know, um, I think the most difficult part of our, our Wellness Center and benefits promotion is that um, Roger keeps getting invited to all these different um, the school corporations and also like businesses who want to uh, copy the model of Carmel Clay School Wellness and uh, and uh, the Wellness Center and our benefits. Uh, so uh, uh, that just keeps growing and getting better and better. And it's really a drawing card to, to draw talented individuals who want to join the, the district. And then finally, continuous improvement, always trying to do better on how can we serve our customers the best. Finally, we're going to go to enhanced operations where uh, we've got, we had a bunch of them back here as well as uh, uh, Mr. McMichael and Todd and that, and that group and Tabitha. Um, always continuously wanting to improve and refine daily operations. And uh, daily operations always has challenges. And, uh, and, and uh, just the, uh, as an example, when the power went out, uh, Christy and her team were right on it. Maintenance was right on it. Uh, there was a lot of work being done to because you have to power everything's powered off and then you can't just turn the switch back on and have everything work. You have to put in the time and the hours and the quickness and it's very very efficient right now, uh, much more than it's been in the past. So uh, flexible long-term financial planning and this falls in that finance team. Long-term planning, and maintenance, design, physical improvements to facilities. And we've we've uh, that's like on every every uh, agenda we have right now and. Uh, uh, I'm proud to say that over the last um, three years of this plan, we've moved a lot of 1990, 91, 92 uh, facilities into an updated 2025, 2024 um, more level. Um, so a lot of the places we've touched at Carmel High School and in different parts throughout the district have, have not been touched in a long, long time. So it's good to see those facilities uh, being updated and being great places for our students to learn and grow. Uh, enhancement of technology services, uh, cybersecurity, data, data privacy, and communication processes. And uh, um, Christy Cloud just something else. Um, you know, a lot of times during a meeting, I'll ask her to explore something, and then I'll get an email during the meeting that she's already completed the, the task I asked her for. But uh, her leadership has been uh, just superb in a time when uh, so cybersecurity breaches, there was just one recently at Richmond schools was attacked and uh, they had to close school. Um, with the data privacy pieces, were uh, very insightful to do that years before anybody else even uh, was, was considering all the, the ramifications of how much data is being plucked uh, from students. Um, having that trusted learning environment, uh, got that insignia a year early. Uh, maybe more than a year early, at least a year early. Um, and then finally, uh, working with uh, Christy and Emily over there, working on the communication processes and, and the pieces that we have and uh, getting analytics and data on our communications and our website usage and really, uh, really loading up our, uh, you know, our website with a lot of information and it's uh, easier to find than ever. Um, you look at the key measures, um, boy, um, it's gone well. That's all I can say. It really has gone well. Um, and here's some strategic examples. Of course, the projects that you've seen, and uh, there's always all the little ones, too, that don't make the list, but uh, there's a lot of them. Uh, I can't remember the number that Todd gave us last time of how many projects we had in the summer. Was it 70-something? 70 70-something 70 projects last summer. Um, there's the cybersecurity. There's the trusted learning environment. And there's the analyzing communication pathways for effectiveness and train the staff. Uh, and that's part that's uh, probably a leftover as well as uh, training the staff on what are the best practices of home to school communications and do we want to stay with the current technology that we're using and keep expanding on that. Uh, and so that's always going to be a, a, an area will probably be one that we'll, we'll continue to work with and engage with and uh, make sure that we're, we're communicating at the highest level possible. Uh, strategic examples. So in, as far as the wellness center goes, we've increased our mental health and physician services due to need. Um, and then with the goals of increased wellness center participation, I think we're making product progress there. Increasing uh, fitness center participation. Roger, would you say we're, uh, our numbers are up? Yep. 
So record setting, I like to hear that. Expanding our financial well-being services, and uh, Dr. Herrera has been uh, uh, doing a great job promoting that, uh, how to manage your money uh, services. Uh, identifying centers of excellence, I'm actually a customer of that. Uh, amazing, amazing how uh, we can identify centers of excellence and, and funnel our, our people there. And uh, they get back on the, it saves the corporation money, saves them money, uh, and also gets them back to work sooner. Uh, maintenance of our cash balance. We've, we're not quite to that 12%. I'd hope to get there before 2025, but uh, we got pretty darn close and we had this pandemic thing and a lot of, a lot of challenges to that. And then finally, uh, something we don't take for granted is we're maintaining that level tax rate at all times. Um, here's our debt service metrics, uh, bargaining agreement, uh, the, the continual improvement of our culture of employee wellness, um, it makes me sad that it's just a little box with a check mark on it, but operating referendum renewal was huge. And uh, there was a lot of work in getting great communications out there, but I cannot appreciate our community enough for wanting to make sure that our, our schools uh, are able to, to support our teachers in a way that keeps us competitive and, and keeps us in where we can attract the best and the brightest. Um, and then, of course, for further refinement internal controls and then uh, you're seeing another one that will be a leftover into the next plan is the implementation of the automated time and attendance system that is progressing but again we're taking it slow to make sure that it works well and that is the fast version of landing the plane for the uh, 2025 spring ending of a three-year strategic plan and uh, what I've been saying to folks around is if you look at this team on uh, that uh, uh, is here representing all that work that got done, the reason they look so tired <laughs> is because for the last three years they have been hitting it hard and, uh, and have achieved a lot. And I just want to ex uh, extend one more time that uh, uh, I'm the luckiest guy on the planet because I get to work with the best people. And, uh, and these leaders that are around this table, you can't do better than... Uh, what we have right here. And uh, not only are they visionary, they can make a plan and then they could execute the plan. And then they get feedback on the plan and they go back and make the plan better. And uh, when I think about another thing we had a, year, a few years back where we wanna be the best at getting better, uh, you're looking at, at this team right here um, every, every year. And then the other piece of it's just the collaboration. Uh, because if you looked at that strategic plan and a lot of the accomplishments the last three years, uh, very few of it was done by a single individual alone. Uh, it's always uh, Christy and somebody, or Dr. Ostrike and Dr. Dudley, and Roger with everybody, and, and David working between curriculum uh, and student services, uh, maintenance, uh, all the different pieces. It's got to be a collaborative effort, and, uh, and it's well-researched that collaborative environments not only do people achieve higher, because together we achieve, and uh, but they also stick around longer. So uh, it's been a pleasure. And uh, at this point in time, I'm going to pass the torch and the microphone over to Dr. Ostrich. Well, good afternoon, uh, President Coquet and members of the board, Dr. Beresford. Um, I'm excited to be here today to talk about our next strategic plan. And today we're going to focus on process and we're going to focus on structure and what that may look like. And so just as guiding our purpose and as a reminder, we have our vision, uh, which is together we achieve. We have our mission. Uh, Carmel Clay Schools will provide opportunities for all students to realize their potential in an ever-changing world. And I loved what Katie Browning, our previous uh, school board president, uh, put up on the uh, for the last strategic plan and I just want to read that um, the strategic plan is anchored by the CCS guiding principles and keeps students at the center of every decision to build upon the current accomplishments and create a lasting positive impact and I love that last part create a lasting positive impact for our students for our families and that is uh, why I'm so excited uh, for this next strategic plan. And so there are the guiding principles. These came from a strategic plan, I believe, back in 2015. 
as I was doing my research and looking through the previous strategic plans, um, this was developed from that. And I look forward to what we're going to develop in the next uh, strategic plan. So what I want to take a look at is first, is, first of all, is how are we going to engage the community? And I think we are very advantageous, and the timing is advantageous, because, uh, with the superintendent transition. So we have an opportunity that this will serve as a dual purpose. It will serve as a dual purpose for me as your next superintendent to listen to the community. And it will also serve as the feedback that we get from our uh, CCS stakeholders to develop and inform the next strategic plan for the future. So I'm really excited for that. I appreciate the foresight of the board in moving forward with the next superintendent because if I wasn't in this role, this may not have taken place or the strategic plan could have been delayed for a year until that new person came on. So I'm very appreciative of that. I think it's also important for the next strategic plan that we gather feedback from our community and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. Um, and then I want to engage our community in various ways as we commence the process beginning with the next school year. And so what I did is I, uh, from the ISBA, they recommended a book uh, that's called Improving Schools Through Community Engagement. And it's a practical guide for educators. And so um, President Koke and I have been reading this book um, and it's gonna serve as a framework for hopefully how we move forward with developing our next strategic plan. And so, number one, we frame the issue, um, which is developing the next strategic plan. Strategic plan. We're going to identify constituent groups, uh, understand that constituent perspective, and then develop strategies to encourage that action or that moving forward. So I'm very excited about that. Page 11 of this book uh, goes through that framework, um, but I'm excited to move forward with that. Yes, or if you want to order it, we're happy to order it for you. Um, and so the first thing I'd like to do is a community survey. Um, it's important to have that vehicle where all CCS community stakeholders can provide meaningful feedback. It will include external and internal stakeholders, um, but it's very important that that survey needs to be reliable, needs to be valid, and produce measurable data. And so I would like, with the board's uh, permission and blessing, to uh, research organizational partners um, with experience working with district survey development and with school districts to partner with an organization in developing those questions that are valid and reliable. Additionally, um, what, once we um, have the survey out to our community, um, I would present the results back at a board meeting. Um, and then we would use those results to inform community listening sessions to gather further feedback, which I'm going to talk about. And so also with the community survey, it's important that we spread the word throughout the community. Um, email, social media, press releases to the current, for example, expedition participants, so on and so forth. And we may need to spend a little money on this so that we can get uh, the survey in the hands of those with children in the district and with those without children in the district so that we have a broad-based uh, feedback that's provided to us. Um, the survey, I'm excited about this as well, it will also serve as baseline data for the district to collect um, and compare uh, the current and then also we can use it in the future. I very much hope I'm here for at least the next five strategic plans here in the district and so I would like to use that data moving forward as baseline data, compare it year to year to year. And these are just some basic sample questions. Hopefully we would work with that organization. Um, but I mean, to get at the premise, what do you value most about Carmel Clay, Carmel Clay Schools? What are we doing well? What do you want to continue see us do here in the district to impact kids? And then what can we do better to pair, prepare students for the future? So those are just base, basic sample questions. We would get deeper. Uh, on that as well to collect the feedback, but we want to explore feedback on all aspects of the district and also on what Dr. Beresford just presented to us, the current strategic plan. Let's get feedback on that as we move forward uh, into the future. And then going from there, sticking with the community engagement, 
Um, I want to conduct listening sessions uh, that will serve twofold as I shared. So these are in-person opportunities to provide feedback to district leadership. Um, it needs to be inclusive. It needs to be dialogue-driven process. So we, it is critical that we are listening uh, in order to learn and grow our understanding of Carmel Clay schools. This is not an opportunity for us to go back and forth with communities or disagree with what they're sharing. We need to soak that feedback in, take that data, and then move forward with um, that process of a strategic plan. Um, we would invite them, organize them. They'd be in small groups. That was also part of the book uh, from ISBA that they recommended. And the questions that we ask will be some, somewhat similar to what's on the community survey, but we can also narrow down of getting that feedback from the survey and then asking more specific targeted questions to enhance our progress uh, forward in the district. And then we want to make sure everyone's voice is heard um, during that process. And so these are just examples. This is not exactly what we're going to do because there might be other groups we want to include. And we may not include all these groups because we'll, we'll get them at certain areas and, and points. However, obviously the board's going to be very important in this process. Our teachers and support staff, our students, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little bit deeper on that, getting that student feedback. Looking at our athletic booster parents, our foundation board, board our uh, Carmel Education Foundation is critical in our mission and vision and what we do here in the district. Our equity and inclusion parent group is an important group I would love to hear more from. Um, city and government leaders and partnering. I think you heard in my superintendent report on how they've been uh, sharing the great news about Carmel Clay Schools. So I want to hear more from them as well. Parents of students with special needs. Um, I presented to uh, the Carmel Lions Club, I think it was last week, um, and get, get feedback from the Lions, the Rotary, the Kiwanis Club, um, obviously our principals and assistant principals, our superintendent's cabinet, many of who are here right now. Performing arts parents play a critical and huge role in our district. And then I want um, some, uh, community, some sessions that are just, we invite the entire community. And you can sign up and you can attend and we want to listen to you and get that feedback so we can include everybody as part of that process. And so with that, um, let's talk about the school board for a second. We have two new school board members that'll be arriving on uh, right after January 1st. And so would the school board consider working on specific goals that will improve school board effectiveness and understanding of the role in the board? And with that, we already have board no norms and then communication expectations that Boards have laid out in the past that provide those governing expectations and consistency for the conduct of our board members. And so would the board be interested in developing specific board goals uh, that can be related to professional development, they can be related to the strategic plan, uh, or other ways? And obviously, ways that we can engage the board for continuous improvement. And then what does the board want to accomplish together? And so maybe we can host some executive sessions and we can have those conversations um, and potentially bring in a trainer that can work and help us develop that. Um, and then, um, as I said earlier, that process is not going to uh, start right now, but that process would commence with the arrival of our two new school board members. And then so a, a draft timeline um, that I put together here, so tonight, presenting the process for developing the next strategic plan uh, for you all. Um, and then if we, if we get the go ahead and everyone's good with the process and the structure, um, we would create, develop, and implement that community survey prior to the end of the semester. So we're gonna start moving here pretty quickly. Then I would present the results to the board in January or early February. Um, and then once we present those to the results to the board, then we're going to go ahead and conduct those listening sessions and those focus groups with the community and host those um, at a variety of locations within the district. And then finally, looking at May and June, present a draft to the board based upon that community stakeholder feedback. Um, the superintendent, uh, cabinet, and executive team would be working very closely on taking all of that uh, feedback and putting together a draft. And then looking at July or August, when uh, Dr. B has sailed into the sunset, and then we're going to continue the work. We're going to roll up our sleeves and uh, hopefully have the new strategic plan ready to go 
in time for the 25-26 or 25, 26 school year. So with that, Dr. Beresford and I would be able, or would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Oh, wow. <clears throat> you want that, or can you hear me here? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Wow. Um, I'm sad that we're doing this now when I'm leaving. Perhaps intentional. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm excited about this. This is a, a great proposal. Um, continuous improvement, man. That is my, my thing. Like, I love to know what the starting point is, build the plan based on feedback and input, and as a team, make changes, improvements that are representative of the needs of students, families, and the community. So I just really appreciate your um, analysis of stakeholders to really inform what we're going to be doing. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. Um, I think if I have questions or um, comments, a consideration after we get the feedback would be who is best in class or cutting edge or um, doing these things right beyond the state of Indiana. I think over the last four years I've talked about, you know, what is our measure when we talk about being better? How did we select that measure? If it's just the surrounding schools, I feel like that uh, parameter or that um, uh, looking at that small of an area is, is just a miss. And so I just think about across the country who's doing things cutting edge and different and next level and even beyond. So. Um, And then, what are the unique factors that Carmel, Indiana has that others, other districts, other schools don't have that we could be celebrating or we could be leveraging as we up the game in what we do, right? Like, what there's so much, I think, that is unique to Carmel. Yeah, I mean, we got roundabouts. But, you know, the diversity in the population and the skill set and the businesses that we have locally um, that could just take what we do to the next level. Those are my preliminary thoughts. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I, I'd like to underline what you, uh, Louise, just said about uh, <clears throat> you know, looking outside uh, ourselves and maybe our locale. I, I think there's a lot to be had. And I don't know if the Indiana School Board or the Board of Education uh, has limits about that. Uh, I know they define a lot of what we do and our bounds, uh, and so does our Indiana code. But I, I really think it'd be good to, from really from a benchmarking, is to see what, what else is being done uh, uh, to be excellent. Looking within our state, I think, I, I do think we need to go beyond. I really like the idea of the community engagement on um, uh, doing a, a survey, kind of a reset. You know, we have a new superintendent, going to have two fifths of a new board. Uh, it is, I agree, it's a great time to just say, hey, let's just take a look, take a little bit of a pause, and and see, uh, you know, see what the community has. Uh, I would like, I, I do like the idea of just a community without putting some bounds, or we're only going to restrict a certain group of people that can. Participate in that. Um, I'd like us to compete for the business of those families that have kids and aren't using the public schools, and get their input and see well, what what can we do to compete for your business. And I know we're not going to satisfy everybody. I wouldn't expect that, but I, I would certainly think that there's there's something that we should listen to, and uh, and think about. <clears throat> um, I'll, I'll take a pause there. This is exciting. Um, I think this is my third strategic plan I've been a part of. Um, and I think at the time when they were made, they were all for a reason. Um, this last one, we were just coming out of COVID. And so there was a lot of things that we needed to do. So I love the idea of it. I love the part um, with the community survey. Um, I agree that it's probably going to need some money. And I think it's going to be money well spent because I think utilizing mailing, you know, I think we because it's easy and cheap, we rely a lot of online things. But I think sometimes we want to definitely reach out to people, you know, who they don't do things online. So I think being able to utilize that, and I think it's a great opportunity for us at the same time to tell our story. Carmel Play Schools is amazing. There's a lot of great things, and so I think, but you know, there's a twofold with that. Um, so I think 
the mailings, advertising, all those different things. Um, I want this to be very high participation. And I think that a lot of times, um, you know, I, so I think a marketing campaign, for lack of a better term, for this community input that we're seeking, I think would be very value added. Um, board involvement, um, I, I will not be part of that, but I think if, from my past experience, absolutely. Um, I know that a lot of time as a board we've had goals and I think what my ask would be is structure is key. You know, we have our board self-evaluation and we usually come out of it like we'd like to do X or Y. I think asking for help from outside sources of how do we put structure along those good ideas that we have, um, I think would be really helpful um, in order to make them, to monitor them and accomplish them. I think that that would be good. So I think as a board, I think having those outside influences, especially having new board members, because they're going to learn about what being a school board is and isn't. And so I think having the people um, who know, um, who can you know, say that this is within your roles and responsibilities and this isn't, um, I think will be really helpful so that we don't um, inadvertently have um, a goal that's not something that's within our purview. So I think that that's really huge. Um, but Oh, and one other thing I saw is utilizing um, the Chamber of Commerce, our one zone. I think that our business partners, who we, especially now in the high school, which I love, is our community partnerships with them, is seeing a lot of, you know, they're the ones that, you know, we have, you know, over 120 world headquarters in Carmel. I mean, they're the ones who are building and bringing in their employees to this community. So I think having some input from them, I think, would be really huge, too. Thank you very much. Yeah, I um, also, this would be my second opportunity to participate in this process. And the first, as Katie said, was really just addressing the gaps that had uh, occurred during the pandemic. And that was such a huge lift after that. Um, but I agree, I think the city could also be a huge driver of this, because I think there's actually 148 corporate business yeah, see? <laughs> uh, headquarters. and. The city has an extreme investment in the success of our public schools. And as Mayor Finkham pointed out and, and Mayor Brainerd before her continuously advocated for the public schools, it's something that helps them show their best foot forward when they're trying to advocate for companies coming here. So that is something that they could present out to those stakeholders. I'm excited. Thank you. I'm going to just echo what everybody else said. I'm really excited about this, especially the community feedback part. Um, just listening, again, also to the students and, and the staff that we have. I was going to touch on what, what Katie kind of said and what some of the things that I know Dr. Ostrike and I learned at ISCA last week. Um, is I agree with having somebody come in and helping us with goals, and but we gained some really valuable information on um, how many goals we need to write. Um, and so one of the books I'm reading is about that. Um, you know, writing seven to eight goals, you're only gonna, you're just not gonna really probably attain any of them. So writing, keeping it to one to three goals and goals that are that are measuring student outcomes, um, and then you know, and ideas is to make sure that those are addressed at every single board meeting um, so that the board goals are addressed every single time that the board is meeting um, and, and giving progress towards those goals. Just excited. I just want to say thank you, and Greg will give you a moment here. Um, I appreciate the feedback uh, from all of you, and I'm looking forward. I am excited because I want to hear from the community and what they have to offer, and the city, I think, is a great um, recommendation as well and and the partnership that we do have with the city is just fantastic and continue that partnership but also to get that feedback um, it's gonna take a lot of time and I'm looking forward to investing that time it's an investment in this community moving forward um, and it's also gonna be an opportunity for those that are on the board because you will be welcome at any of those listening sessions to hear the feedback uh, from our community and so once once we start putting this together and start getting those dates and those times and those locations, certainly I'll get those out and you're welcome to join us at those. So, Mr. Brown, thank you. I was just going to add that I think 
it would be helpful if we really engage the teachers in, in a real uh, direct fashion in because they're the ones in the classrooms you know they're the ones that are dealing with the challenges of different <coughs> students and and, uh, <coughs> and I think so often an organization I'm not being critical of, of Carmel but <coughs> just general uh, corporations at large we, we tend to you know focus in meetings and discuss and bring experts in but uh, I think a lot of times it's easy to, to forget the real experts are the ones in the classrooms. They're the ones that uh, can say, you know, things are changing. Um, uh, that we may be trailing if we're not getting there. So I just would emphasize that we can make them a real active uh, <coughs> uh, member of that. And uh, as far as the board goes, I, I think that's great too. I think it'd really be good to, <coughs> to reset, you know, the, the whole thing. But uh, I like the idea of <clears throat> looking at how how should they I'm having a hard time how to put it and I'll look to Louis she always helps me with trying to say what I'm trying to say uh, how, how do we uh, make the, the process of the board uh, more effective and what, I, what I'm saying there is is more perhaps more active than than we might be uh, in, in in actually being a participant in uh, where we're trying to take us to the next. So I think we. Okay. You're asking how can the board be, um, how the board, how can the board be an active participant in it and support? Like, what are the ways to get involved and be most supportive um, in this process as it goes along? Is that kind of how you're? Yeah. Asking? Yeah. yeah I need you to do that. Yeah, and I think. Uh, should the board uh, be willing to consider the opportunity to look at those board goals? Um, it, perhaps we do bring in an outside uh, trainer, an expert that will help the board uh, and help facilitate that process. And I would be happy to happy to get with you, and Dr. B would be happy to get with you on that to get that going as well. Once we have our two new members with us, yeah, so. yeah, I know. And similarly, as we were talking about uh, becoming the best in class in, in schools and looking looking at uh, other organizations that maybe we, we haven't been, but uh, I think same thing with school boards. I think if we can you know, look at wh where is a best-in-class school board that has really taken you know, their school district from, from one spot to the, to the next level where it was maybe thought not even thought possible. You know, but what can we really do so we're excellent too, you know, not just the administration and the, the rest of the staff, but how can the board really be helpful in, in making it just I can excellent. I can answer partly that I mean I don't have a particular one but I know the book the, the session that Dr. Ostrike and I attended um, and I sent you guys my notes I might have some of them that I need to scan in if you want them but they really talked about um, being an effective and not a dysfunctional school board and the biggest factor was you know looking at being privy to the information some of the things we get about student outcomes and so you know why are we all here why are all of us here for, for student outcomes, correct? And so making sure that that's what the board is focused on, um, that that be the main reason, and then reporting on that and having that be um, at least 50% of our meetings um, reporting on or talking about student outcomes. So I do have a little, but I think having somebody else come in and help us understand how to get there. Um, so, you, you know, and that doesn't look like, I don't know, I'm just going to throw it out. Say, Right now, we focus 10% of a meeting on student outcomes, and then now we need to get to, to 50. Well, I mean, that's you have to gradually get there. So maybe our three-month goal is 20, and then it's, you know, so we set goals to ourselves underneath maybe an overarching goal to focus on student outcomes. But that's just an idea. Um, but that is what effective boards, when this, at least this gentleman that we listened to, when he's, he's looked at them and he trains boards, um, was that focus on, on student outcomes. I think um, part of that student outcome uh, vision and focus it directly ties back to something that you just said, that we, con that we remind ourselves and we concentrate on the fact that the teachers are the experts. And so when we, which I really um, applaud you for bringing up, Greg, that is, we should keep that as one of our central focuses as well. That's why we're all here, to support the teachers. The teachers are on the ground floor with our students, and their expertise 
really needs to be held to the highest value. So thank you so much for bringing that up. And I think being mindful of that will really help us in this process. Okay, thank you. That was a great discussion. Thank you, Dr. Beresford and Dr. Ostreich. May I have a motion to adjourn? We can be done. Good, we already love you already. <laughs> 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 no, <thanks. Yeah. laughs> you just booted him out. Bye. No, just, okay, but but seriously, can I have a motion to adjourn? <laughs> so so <moved>. second. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> a motion from Louise and a second from Katie. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. Thank you.